President Trump is taking heat for refusing to commit to a peaceful transfer of power, win, lose, or draw. Will you commit to making sure that there is a peaceful transfer of power after the election? Well, we're going to have to see what happens. You know that I've been complaining very strongly about the ballots, and the ballots are a disaster. I understand and, that, but and, people are rioting. Do you oh, commit no, to making no, sure that no, there's a no, peaceful wanna, transfer of power? We want to have get rid of the ballots, and you'll have a very trans. We'll have a very peaceful. There won't be a transfer, frankly. There'll be a continuation. Earlier this afternoon, we spoke with CBS News White House correspondent Paula Reed about how the comments are reverberating in Washington and on the campaign trail. Paula Reed, thanks so much for being with us. Let's begin with the president's response yesterday. Senator Marco Rubio of Florida tweeting that we will have a free and fair election. There will be a peaceful transfer of power and the results of the election will be valid. Now we've reached out to Senator Rick Scott's office as well and we're waiting for a response. Are Republican lawmakers privately alarmed by the president's comments? Well, what you've seen today is several prominent Republican lawmakers uh, come out and insist that yes, we will honor the time, uh, the time honored tradition in the United States of a peaceful transition of power. Yesterday in a White House briefing, the president suggested uh, that he may not accept uh, the results of the election, that there may not be a peaceful transition of power, that he wanted to see what happens. Now, we tried to walk that back a little bit today uh, in an interview, suggesting that if the Supreme Court decides a Joe Biden won the election, he would accept that. But there's a lot of things that happen uh, between uh, Election Day and anything getting to the Supreme Court. The president continues to lay the groundwork, trying to undermine confidence uh, in the election, giving sort of anecdotal evidence uh, of ballot fraud, even though today his own FBI director, Christopher Wray, testified uh, that he does not see any sort of widespread uh, voter or ballot fraud in the upcoming election. Now, Paula, do we expect this comment regarding the transfer of power will impact the course of the campaign? And how does it reframe the debate over the Supreme Court battle? It's a great question because of the immediate impact of that is that it, it sort of shifts the conversation away from the president's Supreme Court pick, which is a great story for President Trump as he tries to bring independents, college educated women, and those people who don't like him or his Twitter account back into the fold. It shifts the conversation to questions about the president's respect for the rule of law, puts him really, in some instances, at odds with his own party. So, as we see so often here at the, in the Trump White House, is it kind of stepped on their own good positive message for the campaign. The president may now try to pivot to bring attention back to his Supreme Court nominee, who he intends to announce on Saturday. Unusual decision. He would get a lot more attention if he did this in prime time on a weeknight, but I'm told he wants to get this decision out before the first presidential debate on Tuesday. And of course, we'll be keeping a close eye on the situation here because there is a local judge, Barbara Lagoa, who is on the president's short list to be nominated to the Supreme Court. So of course, Paula will be watching that closely. Now, a remarkable moment moment today when the president went to pay his respects to Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. What happened? This moment was so remarkable for so many reasons. First of all, uh, it's rare that the president comes into such close contact, close, such close proximity to those who oppose him. And at the Supreme Court over the past week, thousands of people have come to pay their respects uh, to the late justice, many of them who openly oppose the president and his desire to replace her, uh, his right to replace her uh, over the next few weeks. So when he arrived there, it was remarkable. He and the First Lady, they were both wearing masks, which is something you don't see a lot, but as he was standing on the steps of the Supreme Court, it was clear. You could hear protesters chanting, vote him out, vote him out. That is not something, that is not the kind of conduct that the president often has to face. Uh, he's very rarely in a situation where he comes uh, in that close of contact to protesters. Now, they were not uh, really face to face. They were about a block away. But if you watch that video, it's clear. You can clearly hear the audio. The president was asked about this a short time ago. He says he couldn't hear what they were chanting. That's possible given the acoustics where he was at the Supreme Court. But anybody who watches that video, they're likely going to be skeptical that he couldn't make out what they were saying. Paula Reed reporting from the Capitol. Thank you so much for your time this evening, Paula.